Well, hey folks, and welcome to Solar Cabin Channel. You know, I recently did a video uh, talking about the uh, heat extremes that we've been having in the western United States and the high drought conditions and high fire, uh, wildfire conditions that we've been having in my area. And I talked about this Hess Air uh, evaporative cooler, evaporative cooler that uh, I've been using. However, at the time that I made that video, it wasn't yet quite hot enough to use the Hess Air Swamp Cooler, so I didn't have it set up to be used yet. Now it's finally gotten over that 100 degree temperature where I need the Hess Air, the bigger uh, swamp cooler in my cabin. Now this unit is designed uh, specifically for low humidity areas. And I live in the high desert at the foot of the Rocky Mountains. Okay, so this area is a low humidity area. It won't work. These swamp coolers don't work well in high humidity areas. They can actually make your situation worse in high humidity areas. They are designed specifically for low humidity areas. And people all over the western United States pretty much use swamp coolers uh, because they use a lot less energy and they they add some moisture to your air which is what we need in this low humidity area uh, to otherwise your skin gets all dried out and you get all itchy so we use swamp coolers a lot in this area so this is the unit that I've been using now and I've had this running for about a month off just my small 400 watt uh, solar power system at my off-grid cabin it will run off of even a smaller system. I ran it off of my 100 watt system just fine, so I know that it will work. It runs, it takes about 85 watts, and it, it has a very large fan. It is designed to cool down an area up to 400 square feet, and it has a 1300 CFM, that's cubic feet per minute fan. So it has a large fan. It has uh, settings for either a high or medium speed and it can be set for either the uh, evaporative cooler setting or it can be set for just fans. So let me show you this unit here. Okay, so this is my Hess Air uh, evaporative cooler, or what they call a, a, a portable swamp cooler is what it is. Now they make swamp coolers that can go in your windows, but generally those things take a lot more uh, power than these units do. And because they have to be put in a window, you usually have to have some type of water source that is pumped into them. It just has to be a drip water source, but you have to have some type of water source flowing into them all the time. Now, my cabin isn't set up that way. My cabin is designed a lot like a self-contained RV, so I don't have a pumped water source uh, that would be used for a uh, a window or, uh, swamp cooler. But I do have uh, uh the potential for water and I can get water at my place from my well outside and then I can use one of these portable these portable units because it has a slot which I'll show you on the side over here it has an opening that you can just pour the water in or you can attach it to a water bib if you have water connections to your house so this is a dual purpose you can use either way and it holds up to like four gallons of water so that's really good now you can see it has it kind of looks <laughs> Kind of looks like a, a miniature washing machine because it has this round opening on it. But that's actually because it has a big fan, event, fan, a 1300 CFM fan. And those uh, flaps on the front there, the vent can be ad positioned, adjusted so that you can direct the air however you want it. It has this little three, uh, this little uh, controller on the front here which is used for uh, uh, setting your speed. And you can set it for either high or medium uh, with the uh, the water running uh, for the swamp cooler feature, or you can set it for just fan use only. It does have a handle on it. It has wheels on the bottom of it, casters that can be locked, and these vent fans do move. They're positionable, so you can move the fan vent, and it really puts out a lot of air. And I'll turn it on so you can kind of hear. It is a little bit loud. I can tell you that. It's kind of loud. But, you know, it, when you want to be cool in your house, you're not too concerned probably about how loud it is. I sleep with it on. It doesn't bother me at all. You get used to, to the uh, sound. So this is what it, it does when it's turned on here. Now, I've just had this on low. And I have this uh, next to my day bed. And it really does put out a lot of cold air. Now I'll show you in the back how this works, but what this has a water tank down there at the bottom. It'll hold about four gallons of water. You can see that little uh, slot right there. That has a, uh, a glass panel in it so you can see how full the water is. It'll hold up to four gallons. However, 
I, in most uh, days, I only fill it up with about a gallon and a half of water through the slot, and that will last me all day long in my cabin uh, for cooling it down. Now, this is just on low, and this will actually cool this down really fast here in the cabin. It can cool up to 400, 500 square feet, and it cools the entire cabin down, but I have this set next to my bed, and that way while I'm working on my day bed, which I also use as my desk, I've got my laptop here, and so while I'm working uh, from my uh, day bed couch, uh, this is blowing uh, around here, and Tazzy, my dog, comes in, and she just plops herself right down. She knows exactly where it's cold. She plops herself right down here on the floor uh, to get cooled off, and then she goes wanders back outside uh, when it's really hot. Now, I only use this big unit when it's over 100 degrees. Otherwise, I don't really need it here in the cabin because my cabin stays fairly cool. But once it gets over that 100 degrees, we, we need some uh, air conditioning here in, in these off-grid cabins. And this will run off of about uh, 85 watts. So or run off of just a small system. I run this off of my 400 watt system. During the daytime, I have uh, lots of extra power. My batteries are usually full by about 10 o'clock in the morning. And so then all day long, I just all got all this extra free excess power uh, from my solar panels that I can be using for running this swamp cooler. So why not be using it, you know? And it doesn't affect my batteries at all. Even at night, I can run this thing all pretty much all night long and have it hardly affect my batteries at all during the summer. And so that's really nice, uh, and it works really well. Now, I'm just going to show you on the back of these. It has a, uh, a I wouldn't, I don't know that I would call it a filter. It is a filter of a type, but what it is, it's a mesh, and I think it's like a plastic uh, but it's got a water pump down there in the bottom that pumps the water up, and then the water trickles down over this uh, mesh, and it sucks in the air from the backside through that wet uh, membrane, and that cools the water, that cools the air down, and then it pumps it out through the front, which is much cooler air, and it really does help. It it will bring the temperature down right here and uh, sitting in front of them. It. It'll bring the temperature down a good 20, 25 degrees lower than the ambient temperature in the room. So that's a really nice, you know, uh, that's as much as what you would get from like a refrigerant air conditioner. It will really cool the place down. So it does have a, uh, it does have the ability to be attached to a hose, which you can see down there. It does have a, uh, a hose bib, which you can attach it to a hose if you want to. So you could attach it this right, you'd have to provide the hose. Now it's probably a half inch hose bib, but uh, you can attach that to a hose bib and you could usually run that like to your sink or something like that if you want to do it that way. However, I find it much more convenient just to use this uh, this slot down here and you can just use, I use a, uh, a bucket and you just pour in, you can put in like uh, one and a half, here's my bucket. I've got a two gallon, I've got like a two gallon bucket that I use. And you can just use that, and I usually fill it up like uh, three-quarters of waste or about a gallon and a half of water. And you just pour in a gallon and a half of water, and that will usually last this all day long, uh, usually, uh, when I'm running it. Because I usually run it from like noon until, uh, you know, 9, 10 o'clock at night, usually, is as long as I need to run it. And it does have uh, these uh, this, this slot here that just opens up, and then it's a little bit stubborn. <laughs> But you can slot, you, it closes that back up. Anyway, can't do it with one hand. But you can hear the water trickling, trickling down through this uh, membrane material. And you can kind of see the water. And it just pulls the uh, air in from the room. And then it blows out the cold air from that side over there. And it does, it works really well, folks. I can tell you, uh, it's been probably a lifesaver here in my cabin. Because I can set this... Uh, it has, it has really been a lifesaver here in the cabin because I can set this right here uh, next to my workspace and my bed. And I turn this on just on low. I don't even put it on high. I put it on low and it really does cool this area right down. I mean, it'll make it icy cold if you're sitting right in front of it. A lot of times where I'm sitting here working on the computer, I'll actually cover my legs up with a blanket because it gets too cold in here with this uh, swamp cooler running. And at 85 watts, it's not going to put any uh, major uh, strain on my system. Okay, folks. Okay, folks, so that is the Hessair uh, Evaporative Cooler. 
Uh, it will cool up to 400, 500 square feet, 1300 CFM fan. It works really well off a small off-grid system. I'm running mine off just a 400 watt off-grid system. It will run on off of even a smaller inverter and smaller system. I wanted to do this video review of this unit uh, while I'm actually using it so you can see it in use. And uh, that way you can get one of these if you need to. Uh, it, I think they would be really good products for off-gridders in areas with low humidity for your cabins. Could also be used in an RV or camper in a low humidity area or, or a situation like that. All right, folks, I hope you enjoyed this video. As always, go my, by my website, simplesolarhomesteading.com. Take a look at the new plans uh, for cabins and off-grid information that I have there. Have a great day, everybody.